Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Idiomatic Top 3. With Nicholas, I'm the video game correspondent for Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic.com and movie critic. And what are we talking about today? We're, today we're talking about role reversal. Does that mean that you're going to edit this podcast when we're done? Yes, that's why it will never, ever be published. <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> or it's just going to be me talking and Dimitri will be all out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, so what do we mean by role reversals, Nick? Well... Certain people have certain expected roles, like I don't know, the police maintains the law and the robbers steal stuff. And in those particular media, either movies or game or whatever, it gets, you know, reversed. For example, the police is really corrupt and you have the robber trying to, you know, do the right thing. Right. All right. <laughs> so what is, Nick, your number three pick for a role reversal? Well, mine is a video game because I need to have at least one to keep my video game correspondent license, I guess. You make the rules. Uh, so I'm <laughs> going to talk about Diablo 2. And to understand why it's role reversal, you need to go back to the end of Diablo 1, where uh, you learn throughout your adventures that to contain the essence of the three main evils, uh, they created soul stones. And when they tried to imprison one of them in the soul stone, it shattered. And it's like they're like, it can't hold the demon anymore. What do you want to do? And one guy said, well, you know, stab me through the heart with it. So my body will contain the, 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 the essence of the demon. Okay. And, you know, then chain me up and, you know, um, I'll sacrifice myself and the demon will be contained. So at the end of Diablo, you kill Diablo and you get his stone that he, was, he managed to escape. And the stone kind of looked damaged, so you do the only thing you can think of and you stab yourself in the head with it. Okay, that's to fun. To try and contain the essence of Diablo. It turns out that it didn't work. And in Diablo 2, the hero of the first one becomes Diablo. So you be, from being like the guy that killed Diablo, you become the monster you tried to kill, which was like, it kind of sucks having played the first one and knowing that I caused this, but it's a pretty good twist, really. <laughs> when you think about it, it's a great way of making a sequel hmm. since you've already killed Diablo the first time. Like, how do you bring him back, really? Oh, you, you didn't. You, you fucked up when you tried to contain him. It's it's perfectly cool. I like that. That's fun. Yeah. I don't think that's fair play in terms of uh, sequels. I mean, like for video games at least. I mean, like I think for uh, a movie that would piss me off, like you know, you get attached to a character and then he succeeds, and the second movie is like, yeah, no, he didn't. <laughs> I know because really the character is you in, in the video game. You know, you're controlling everything, and also you can create different characters, so you don't really get attached to one. You have so yeah. many characters that. I get to play different characters now and kill myself. It's it's sweet. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Anyway, it's a great game, so just check it out anyway. Just you know, maybe the mechanics are a little old. You know, it limited inventory space, but besides that, just check it out. It's a great story too. Yeah. Plus, you know, no online shops and stuff. So. <laughs> Indeed. What is your number three? Spoiler free, please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my number three pick is a pretty recent movie, actually. All my three picks are movies, for those of you who are interested to know. The Mortal Instruments City of Bones. Okay. Uh, those of you who don't know it, it's uh, a new series of movies based on uh, young adult novels, supernatural romance, a la Twilight. In fact, it sort of checks the boxes of the Twilight knockoff list pretty thoroughly. <laughs> nice. Um and it's about this girl who realizes that she might have a legacy as a uh, demon hunter and follows her heartthrob, who's a demon hunter and all that stuff. Yeah, blah, 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 really. Standard young adult novel stuff. But here's the cool thing about it in terms of role reversals. At one point, they meet a sorcerer who's sometimes their friends, sometimes not. Like, he's shifting allegiances, like that kind, like that cool, mysterious character yeah, of that course. you have in all movies, right? Yeah, yeah. And that cool, awesome character who actually is, I, I've, I've read up on the internet, he is like the fan favorite from uh, the fans of the books as well. Yeah. So he's like totally the hand solo of the series. He also happens to be a flamboyantly gay Asian dude. Nice. Yeah. Who walks around pantsless throughout the entire movie. It's fan freaking fantastic. Does he wear underwear at least? Yeah, yeah. He has like, okay. uh, he has boxer shorts. Uh, but he spends most of the movies like uh, pantsless and sometimes shirtless with a vest over him. 
And like he, the movie does it well. Like he's super cool. Like he's totally my favorite character. But he's also like this totally flamboyantly gay Asian dude, and you never see that ever. Does the book describe him like that at all? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and and he's still a fan favorite, which which tells a lot about you know the audience that you know maybe people have started maturing, you know, and mm-hmm. not just like, oh, the character is gay, I don't like him, you know. And so it's, it's it's a good thing, but yeah, it's like seeing the cool guy like that at all. No, of course the cool guy is usually he usually wears a trench coat, doesn't say much at all, usually has a very long sword. You know? yeah. <laughs> just and he has some of the those attributes because he does have the long vest over his boxer shorts. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. And he has shifting allegiances, and he doesn't talk too much. He's always speaking in slight riddles and says cool stuff. Like so, he is that character at the same time as being that. Uh, that thing that in, in fiction when I was ki- a kid was the thing to reject, you know? Yes. Oh, that's that's really cool. Yeah, I, know, I, I really dig that character. I, I love that the filmmakers also went like, yeah, no, we're doing it like the book. Like, people are going to love gay Asian dude. <laughs> was the, did you, you know if the author had anything to say about that? Say, no, you're keeping the characters the same as? or uh, I, I don't know how much... Uh... Clary had in terms of control over it. Uh, I, I I doubt that it's that big of a control. Really. Okay, yeah, because I know in Twilight, I think Meyer had like zero to say. I think zero to say, really. Yeah, well, but plus, I mean, like in fairness, Meyer didn't care. Like, yeah. so really, Meyer was like, yeah, I've, I, yeah, I've outgrown this shit a long time ago. Yeah. It's like he reads like, yeah, in the book he's nineteen, in the movie he's like a forty year old dude. It's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but it's nice that they kept it like that at all, especially for the really, you know, the cool character everybody likes. I think if you change it, you you, you risk getting backlash if you if you don't actually follow it to a T, really. Which is something you saw in the Hunger Games when you know apparently Katniss was too fat. Yeah, Which but is something I is like. Well, first of all, like, is she really too fat, like Jennifer Lawrence, or is she perhaps like a normal weight person? Yeah, but you know, she's supposed to be starving. It's like, she's a great actress. Be happy she's doing her yeah, movies. Totally. Oscar-winning actress, and you're going to complain she's too fat? It's like, no, she's perfectly fine-looking. But you know, I guess it didn't follow the character to a T. So the real fan didn't know well, the real fans. Are. Yeah, but the loud uh, it, fans. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And the, the people who complain about it complain only until the movie came out, and then they realize, oh god, she incarnates the character so well, and they yeah. stop complaining about okay. it. So at least that's not too bad. And no, in this case of the movie, maybe you're right. Maybe they did follow it because they were afraid what would happen if they didn't follow it. Mm-hmm. At, the same, at the same time, I think it would have been a reason not to adapt the book for a lot of producers, like Hollywood producers, might have shied away from it because, like, let's face it, there's so much debate about homosexuality and corruption or children and all that crap yeah that i can see easily a hollywood producer going like yeah maybe they don't want to push that button you know what i mean <laughs> but yeah the makers of uh the mortal instruments who i mean in fairness they're canadian producers so maybe that's why there's a difference yeah uh, they just went like whatever dude gay asian dude is what's on the book gay asian dude is what <laughs> we're doing and he's gonna be awesome nice i i totally respect them for that yeah anyway uh sorry your number two pick of four role reversals sir uh it's a documentary called fathead and to understand why it's a role reversal you need to go uh in the past maybe like i think 10 years or so when uh super size me came out morgan uh, spurlock you know did his McDonald's diet and talked about the evil of McDonald's and everything it does. And in Fathead, basically, the guy basically turns that all on his head and basically talks about the evil of Morgan Spurlock, which is like, <laughs> it's really, really funny how he does it too, especially since he's a comedian, so he knows how to turn things funny. But like, the main thing is like his diet, where Spurlock claimed he ate like more than 5,000 calories. And the guy pretty much showed that that was impossible. Like so many combinations of different food. And it was like, the guy cannot have eaten 5,000 calories by only three meals a day. He must have eaten a lot more just to get fat, mm. just to prove that McDonald's is evil. Mm. And, you know, so who, who's the real evil now? Is it McDonald's or is it Spurlock? Who's lying, basically? And it's like McDonald's advertised to children, it, it, you know, that's evil. And he just does an interview with his mother. It's like, you know, how often did I want to go to McDonald's? I was like, this is mother's like, every night. It's like, how often did I get to go to McDonald's? Yeah, we, I, I let you go once a week. And he's like, what if I, my, I hold my breath until my, I turned blue? She's like, well, you would have died. <laughs> she's just, 
basically all the all the, the arguments he goes like against McDonald's, the guy basically turns it on his head and it's like, it's not McDonald's fault. It's basically to, to, to the attribute to other stuff. And the most egregious one is really like, you know, poor people, that's the only place they can eat McDonald's, don't know how much calorie is in their food. And that's that's like the worst one, really. It's, oh, like, it's so condescending. It's really condescending. And he basically goes outside and asks random people, you know, how much calorie you think is in this? And he has a value meal. And everybody's like, that's a lot of calories. So, you know, people are not ignorant. I like Spurlock thinks that they are. It's just seeing that one. And after that, just thinking back to supersize me, it's like, well, the guy, you know, he, he seemed like a nice guy in the first one. And this one's like, no, complete asshole, really. <laughs> he, he's just, he just did that because, you know, McDonald's a big corporation. It's evil. So let's just hit on the evil corporation. And like, I'm glad that they're starting to call each other on their crap with that stuff. Because ever since Michael Moore uh, made those documentaries who are much more uh, personal essays on film more than anything. And that allows to cheat, you know, like... Yeah. You know, when uh, trying to prove that uh, Canada is more peaceful than the United States, you know, he knocked on like 18 doors before finding a door that wasn't unlocked. And then he uses that as if it was the first door and things like that. Like, yeah. Like that's lying. That's pure and simple misrepresentation. Yeah. And Michael Moore popularized that way of making documentaries. And it's so unfortunate because you can't trust what you're seeing now yeah. i used to believe documentaries and be interested in them because oh i learned things without the without having to filter through the bullshit of drama if you will exactly and now i can't anymore and i'm glad that they're starting to sort of like turn on each other for doing things like that yeah. because like somebody has to because people believe this garbage i know and yes Especially that one where he, you know, he's a comedian, so ha ha ha. But no, his whole diet is on his website and you can see what he ate and he has his little document. So his, he is very thorough at, you know, basically disproving everything this prologue did. So what is your number two? Uh, my number two pick is a, uh, um, a, a Catherine Bigelow, a science fiction film written by uh, her ex-husband, James Cameron. So, already a pretty good team. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> uh, Strange Days, uh, starring Ralph Fiennes and uh, Angela Bassett. You mean Rafe Fiennes. Oh, sorry. Rafe Fiennes and yeah. Angela Bassett. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, the movie is about uh, this low-life con artist guy who stumbles upon a technology that allows you to experience someone else's memories. And stumbles upon a murder through that technology that leads to sort of a, a, a big cultural revolution right on the eve of the new millennium. Okay. And what's kind of really neat in terms, in terms of role reversals is, well, as you know, James Cameron is a big fan of writing strong action women. Yeah. And he's possibly the only director who pulls it off in a way that doesn't feel like you're writing a dude with boobs or you're sort of writing a superwoman that's not afraid of anything so i'm not interested in her because she's not a real human being like you know it's, yeah. it's sort of a delicate balance because we don't view action heroes as women in general so a lot of directors have a hard time trying to figure out what that is and okay. it's, it's a bit sad that we haven't reached the point where we figured it out yet but there we go but james cameron totally has and what's kind of neat about this movie is like uh we've heard a lot about the damsel in distress especially if you play video games there's been a lot of brouhaha's this, uh, you know, in the past years about like all oh, the horrors of the uh, damsel in distress, and depending on how you feel about it, whatever. Yeah. One thing that has to be sort of acknowledged is that, um, yeah, it's not just in video games; it's in movies as well. That's uh, and it's in storytelling since the dawn of time. And yeah. And what's cool about uh, Strange Days is that it totally reverses the role for uh, Ralph Fiennes' character, who's the main character, who's like the con artist, and Angela Bassett, who's a bodyguard who sort of likes him and keeps getting him out of trouble. So the entire movie is this dude who cannot throw a punch to save his life, getting his life saved continuously by this bodyguard played by Angela Bassett going like, God damn it. Like she's like totally the action hero is just going like, God damn it, dude, can you stop screwing up for five goddamn seconds so that I don't have to rescue you every other scene? Nice. It's hilarious. And it's brilliant. And it, it, and it's not played in this like, ha ha, we're reversing the roles. It's played as in like, this is an old movie. And in 1999, that's what the world will be like. You know? Okay. 
you know, it's played like totally straight, not like, oh, we're so progressive. It's just like, that's how it is, you know? Yeah. No, I, I like that. If yeah. the movie goes too much and, you know, it's like, haha, look at how, you know, you see, you see this, this is a woman, she's fighting and yeah. I'm the guy, I'm kind of cowering here. Yeah. You're kind of missing the point and you're kind of, you're going around another time and you're, you know, you're, you're going back to this stereotype of, you know, the damsel in distress or just, you know, at, at pointing it out too much, you're kind of, you, you lost the whole purpose there. Yeah. So if you're doing it subtly or you know, don't even mention it at all, just do it, period. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fun. And plus, uh, well, Angela Bassett, as you know, is black. Yeah. And uh, that means that the main action heroine of the movie is a black woman, which, you know, you don't see at mm. all. You know, unless you count black exploitation films, but like it falls into the category of like you're so in your face about it that it doesn't really change anything in terms of social dynamics where this movie is like it's a mainstream movie yeah where the action hero character happens to be a black woman and nobody's making a big deal about yes. it. yes again not making the big deal about it is the cool thing you yeah. know it's like if they mention every three sentences but you're black you know <laughs> you, you lose the purpose you know so i think that's great as well and that sounds very good strange line you called it strange days strange days sorry actually the story itself is super cool like there's a big murder mystery a political plot plot involved in it and some cool ideas about how technology would this sort of technology would affect uh a society it's actually really good okay yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna check on that then mm. interesting what is your uh number one pick sir for best role reversal well before that i need to you know talk a bit about a little bit of statistics before i go into why it's a role reversal okay um, as we know, you know, sharks attack humans, you know, sharks kill about 12 humans per year. I learned that every year on Shark Week. Indeed. Humans, on your hand, kill 100 million sharks a year. So in the grand scheme of things, you know, humans kill sharks a lot more. Then there's this director that decided, you know, I think it was Steven Spielberg, his name was, he's like, I'm going to be crazy and have the sharks kill people instead of people killing the sharks. And he came out with this movie Jaws, and I think it was brilliant. You know, very suspenseful, <laughs> suspenseful, and it was like, wow, the shark are the bad guys here, not the humans. It, it's it's very spectacular. And you think it's a joke, but I'm very serious because you know sharks are not dangerous murder murder and killers. Humans are <laughs> the dangerous murder killers. So it's you know it's a good movie, but again, I'm kind of sad about the you know. The track record it left afterwards that now like everybody's terrified of sharks and you have to hunt them and kill them until there's none left it's like oh is that why they hunt them and because i thought the shark fins are pretty popular that thing too and, yeah, yeah, the, yeah that, that's the worst part you know if you were at least going to eat the whole shark i wouldn't mind that but just cut the fins off and let the shark to drown in the water that's terrible that's terrible if no if you're going to kill an animal like use all of it I, yeah I, i'm a big believer yeah. of that and i've eaten shark before not shark fin but I've eaten shark before, and it's pretty good, yeah. you know. So, and shark fin actually tastes like absolutely nothing. It tastes like the broth you put it in. So, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So people who are great fans of shark fin soup, it's basically like the emperor has no clothes. Okay. okay. But, yeah, every time there's like an accident or, you know, somebody gets attacked or uh, unfortunately killed, it's like, oh, no, we need to go on the shark hunt and kill all the sharks near the beach so we'll be safe. And that has never amounted to anything at all. Basically, just new sharks move in. Because there's more food now, because there's no more shark left to eat it. And those, you know, okay, they, they attack humans usually by mistake, because uh, humans taste terrible to them. Uh, yeah, and it's also, um, sharks are actually remarkably lazy predators. They're a little bit like uh, jackals in that in that sense. Like, they don't, they only go for easy prey. Yeah. Uh, and humans, if, if you're a healthy human fighting back and whatnot, like, that's more trouble than it's worth for the shark. Yeah. So they'll just, like, the minute you fight back, they'll just be like, ugh. Not yeah, especially, time, especially if you punch them, you know, in the eyes, mm -hmm. which they need to hunt. It's like, no, it's totally not worth it. And uh, they'll they'll let go. So, In fact, they'll, they'll try for you once or twice and then move on because it's not worth their time. That's yeah. totally how sharks behave. Yeah, so it's it's just kind of, you know, sad that like, they, the sharks have become like the demons because mm -hmm. of that. And again, again, all because of one role reversal that, you know, somebody decided to make like the shark, that you know, giant killer. You know, I, I prefer those non role reversal when they have like real, actual, real, you know, the most dangerous animal on earth, which is the human, uh, kill other humans. You know, that, that makes me feel, you know, better. You don't need to have the role reversal there. I guess they would not make a, a you know, a movie about the, the animal, the actual non human animal that kills the most, which is the hippopotamus. For real? Yeah. 
3,000 humans roughly per year die of hippopotamus because they think they're, they're, you know, oh, it's just a big fat animal in the river that does nothing. No, it, it'll attack you and it will kill you in one snap. But yeah, because it's, it's it's jaw is like it's it's a bone breaker. That yeah, thing. that's what it's designed for. Right? It pretty much yeah. Well, so for. that's 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 its use for the hippopotamus is what I meant to say. Yeah, indeed, it's it's, it's designed to it's, snap it's, humans. It's intelligent design. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I don't think sci-fi would ever have like a hippopotamus <laughs> show. <laughs> I mean, cause Hippo he, terror. Yes, because you actually have to go in the river for it to attack you. It wouldn't charge you or nothing else. So. That would be actually that would be hilarious, and I would watch it. But yeah, that is my number one role reversal. It is peculiar, but I'll allow it, sir. Thank you. What is your number one? Uh, my number one pick, also off the beaten path, I suppose. It's another movie, as I promised. Uh, John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China, starring Kurt Russell. Yeah. Oh, first of all, like that movie's pretty freaking awesome. Oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, it's this trucker dude who goes into Chinatown and falls into like the most magical version of Chinatown you'll ever see where he ends up fighting sorcerers, demons and whatnot and falls into the, essentially a Shaw Brothers film with full yeah. of magic and kung fu. Just because he won his big rig, his big rig back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and one of the f- great jokes in that movie, and I'm surprised at the amount of people who uh, well, actually don't get it, but like... and. Like, this is not just me reading into the movie. John Carpenter has confirmed that in interviews. But uh, the idea was always that this is a movie where the sidekick doesn't realize he's the sidekick. Yeah. And there's a little bit of maybe it's a racial component. Like, maybe Kurt Russell, the sidekick, doesn't realize he's a sidekick because he's the only white guy in the story and doesn't realize that, hey, white guy could be the sidekick, not necessarily your Asian best friend. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. (laughs) But yeah, that's the thing. His Asian best friend there is the hero of the piece because he's the one, um, he's the one getting the girl at the end, saving the princess and yeah. all of that. He's the one uh, fighting the sorcerer and all of that. Yeah. He's the one driving the story, making the decisions, uh, being the heroic guy, all of this. And all Jack Burton does throughout the entire film is screw up after screw up after screw yeah. up. Most of the time you just see him running with his gun and yelling and then he just ends up in trouble. Or you're like, yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah, he's, his best friend even has the character arc where he starts off unsure and kind of detached from his roots and then ends up uh, embracing his roots and gaining superpowers by drinking from the gourd afterwards and becoming the hero he's meant to become. And Jack Burton just pretty much stays the same throughout the entire movie. Yeah. Because he's the freaking sidekick. Yep. And also, he does not get the girl at the end. No. <laughs> she she asks him, he's like, Nope. <laughs> he just drives away, which was like pretty funny, actually. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's so funny, that movie. And I think that joke is, makes an already really fun movie, like freaking hilarious. Like, I cannot watch this movie without cracking up anymore now that I've seen that joke. Yeah. It, it's done well, as opposed to in Batman and Robin, where Robin whines that he wants more. You know, I want to be this and you don't trust me. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, okay, that's that's just him whining. It's not, you know... It's the psychic wanting more, but it's, it's just painful to watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whereas here, he doesn't even, he's just like, no, I'm the main character. And he, I'm, he does things and he's just like, at least he gets back up every time he, you know. Oh, no, because he's a good sidekick. Yeah. He's a yeah. very good sidekick. Indeed. He just, and the reason why he doesn't whine is because he's too stupid to know that he's the sidekick. <laughs> That's a good point. That is a good point. <laughs> If you guys haven't seen that movie, it is uh, fantastic. It's so much fun. Uh, one of the things, though, I do uh, find it unfortunate that they didn't go with the original idea for the screenplay, which was to set it in cowboy times. Oh. Yeah. It, he was supposed to be like this lone cowboy arriving to this town, which happens to be a Chinatown. Yeah. And uh, with his, uh, and he's friend with a couple of Chinamen and whatnot. Like, I'm using the term Chinamen not, uh, then it, like, because it's in cowboy times, that's what he would have called them. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, um, and, and, you know, going through the exact same adventure, never realizing that just because he's the lone stranger from town doesn't mean that he's the hero of the piece. Yeah. I, I think that would have been even funnier. Although, you know, they, did kind of manage though. He's he's driving his big ring in town, you know, and he did wear the cowboy boots if I remember correctly. He did, yeah, and he even he has a hat for a while, which looks really stupid. <laughs> yes. <on him. laughs> oh, he looks like ridiculous the whole movie, like a sidekick costume, pretty much. You know, 
his wife beat her, and he's like, what the hell is that? She looks ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, no, that spectacular movie. I want to yeah. rewatch it now. Oh, yeah, I love that movie. I, was, I wasn't sure the first time. I was like, yeah, that sounds like a weird title. What the hell? But <laughs> Tina's like, oh, no, it's, this is funny. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess that's it for us. Yep. All right, so on that note. If you want to share with us uh, your favorite role reversals, you can write us at mail at idiomatic.com or post a comment at idiomatic.com. You can also uh, find us on iTunes, on Twitter, on Facebook. If you could like us on Facebook, we would really appreciate it. It's what allows us to continue to uh, produce uh, regular content for you, a content that we hope you like. Indeed. And um, on that note, I guess um, it's your turn to edit, so go. Yay! Yay! <laughs>